I tend to be, you know, rather, rather controversial in things, and so I stand for a lot of issues that cut against the grain. Dr. Cornell West is unapologetically opinionated. Do you think we can meet the challenge? We right. A trait he credits for his trailblazing career. Let us never be afraid in the face of hatred. But now the philosophy professor says it's part of the reason he's leaving his prestigious post at Harvard Divinity School, recently tweeting his resignation letter after he was denied tenure. You had been tenured before, not only just at Harvard, but other schools. So why not this time? I was a university professor at Harvard, then a university professor at Princeton. And then they're going to come to me and say, well, you know, we don't really think that you can undergo tenure because we can't really give you the reasons. But I've been a black man in America for over 60-some years. I know what's going on. It had nothing to do with academics. So you were saying that this isn't just about race. It could be about politics, activism, oh, all kinds absolutely. of things. It's, it's about anti-Palestinian sensibility. It's about critiques of Wall Street to issues that in some ways could possibly present a challenge. Tenure exists to protect academic freedom. Irene Mulvey is president of the American Association of University Professors. Her organization helps develop standards and policies for higher education. You're not worried about your job security for teaching the wrong thing or saying the wrong thing or because somebody doesn't like what you're researching. After the outcry, Harvard administrators offered Dr. West a five-year contract and a title with the consideration of a future tenure bid, but he declined. In a statement, Harvard Divinity School thanking Dr. West for his enormous contribution to issues of racial justice, saying they'd hope to retain him on our faculty for many years to come. Your departure was devastating to a number of students, many saying that you were the first black professor they had ever had. Did you owe it to some of those students, though, to, to, to somehow find a way to stay because of your I impact? I, I did. I mean, I stayed to fight because Harvard offered me more money. They offered me big chairs. And I said, it's not about that. If you can't even undergo a tenure process, you can't negotiate respect in that regard. Three months after that public tenure dispute, New York Times Magazine journalist Nicole Hannah-Jones reignited the debate, announcing she was turning down a night chair position at her alma mater, the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, after it didn't initially offer her tenure for a role that had always come with tenure. I think it showed that there was not a respect for what black faculty go through on campus and that they need to have uh, the stated and public support and the courage of leadership when our work is challenged. The numbers show that across the board, colleges are suffering from lack of representation. ABC News data team analyzed the most recent U.S. Department of Education reports on more than 4,000 schools, finding that 70 percent of faculty are white, even though a little more than half the students enrolled are non-white. The data also indicating that non-white professors are less likely to make tenure. Only 10 percent of all tenured professors are people of color. Nicole Hannah-Jones is now set to be the inaugural night chair in race and journalism at historically black Howard University. Simply resolving my issue doesn't resolve the larger obstacles and discrimination that black faculty and particularly black women scholars face all across this country. What you can see is a black woman not getting what was given automatically to everyone that came before her. In a statement, the university said it is disappointed that Hannah Jones won't be joining the faculty and that the school is working toward a more inclusive and equitable campus. Higher education is not immune to systemic and institutional racism. Faculty of color are always asked to serve on diversity, inclusion, and equity task force. And as a result, when a faculty of color come up for tenure, they may have found they, don't have, they didn't have the same amount of time for research as their white colleagues. That imbalance is also a disservice to students. ABC's analysis found that non-white students at colleges with more diverse faculty actually have higher graduation rates. That is the key to success for students. Even so, a breakdown of full-time professors finds that black males, black females, and Latino males each accounted for 2%, while Latina females made up just 1% a minuscule number with a significant impact. Georgetown University senior Yuritza Aguilar is the first in her family to go to college. 
her parents immigrants from Central America, and she says professors of color have been crucial throughout her education. You feel comfortable asking them, like, hey, could I get a, uh, an extension? Um, could I get a letter of recommendation? And you don't feel like a sense of imposter syndrome. With a Latino professor, it's, or even a minority professor, it's so much easier to approach them and sort of talk about your upbringing, especially if they have, you know, that same shared, like, family experience, cultural experience, language experience. My parents work minimum wage jobs. I've gone to public school my whole life. Daughter of immigrants. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I wanna get emotional. <laughs> I'm sorry. If they see faculty that look like them, the message they get is that I can succeed here. I can succeed in this field. Early last year, Yuritsa was part of a group of student volunteers who helped the school hire two more Latino professors in the history and American studies departments. Now she wants to change the school's landscape even more, starting a petition to create a Latino studies minor. I wanted to see what else students could do. What do we need to build upon? No justice, no After like the murder of George Floyd, I think Georgetown has been more responsive and more critical about the way they have dealt with diversity. So they've recently established a racial justice initiative and hired a new professor of color. But we want to be able to hold Georgetown accountable. The reality is there has been great progress, right? Yes, uh, Non-white professors are being tenured at higher rates than ever before. Would you agree? Absolutely. Why has it been progress? The racism is still at work at each and every one of these institutions, yet there's decent people of all colors who are willing to fight against it. That's the good news. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.